Lebanon is going through a crisis of mammoth proportions, an economic crisis that could rank among one of the world's worst since the mid-1800s. Why have officials there let the country get to this point? Are there hidden hands at play, especially when it comes to the U.S.? Hi, I'm Kavit Ahvoy. Welcome to another edition of Economic Divide. Coming up in today's program, the worst economic indicators for Lebanon are at play. Its banks are largely insolvent, unemployment is soaring, and its currency has crashed. Enough to make a country go under, practically. Also coming up in this program, we're going to take a look at the EU and the U.S. factor using sanctions against Lebanon, especially the U.S. preventing investment. Is this all about trying to corner Hezbollah with an eye on Iran? And then Russia's interest in Lebanon along with China. Russia is trying to get a foothold in the country through Lebanon's gas resources located in the eastern Mediterranean. After 15 years of civil war, Lebanon began rebuilding. It did so through massive borrowing. As a result, the budget was drained. Today's debt is now equivalent to 170% of its GDP. Lebanon's economy is based on services like banking and tourism. It also does not produce many goods. It imports 80% of what it consumes. This is while it relies on investments from Persian Gulf countries. The war on Syria and falling oil prices decreased the central bank's resources. To make matters worse, there are three different exchange rates. One US dollar used to be about 1,500 Lebanese pound. Now in the black market, it goes to 20,000 Lebanese pound. There are fears that Lebanon could fall back into its dark past of civil unrest. The country of Lebanon is unraveling in the worst possible way. It has not had a government for almost a year now. Its economy is collapsing. The Prime Minister designate Saad al-Hariri has just resigned, with all hopes now pinned on the new Prime Minister designate Najib Mighati. And there has been widespread mismanagement and corruption to add to all of that. Let's zoom in on the corruption factor, and in particular, this man. Riyad Salame, Lebanon's central bank chief. It is widely assumed that he has abused his power, facing allegations of fraud, suspected embezzlement, and money laundering. This is a snapshot of his rap sheet. Mr. Salame, his brother, Raja Salame, other relatives, and Marianne Hoayek, who heads the central bank's executive office, are all under investigation for illegally wiping funds from Lebanon into Swiss banks and then laundering millions in France through high-end real estate purchases. In one case, from the years 2002 through 2015, the bank transferred at least $330 million in commissions to the company's Swiss account. In another case, Raja Salame transferred more than $200 million from Fori's Swiss account to his accounts in Lebanese banks with strong political ties. Now that's over $550 million. Let's see what our guests have to say about this. First, Abbas Kode, he's a member of Citizens in a State political party who joins us for this segment. Citizens in a State is a Lebanese political party that was launched in 2016 by Charbel Nahas, a Lebanese politician and economist. Now, the party is also a participant in the 2019-2020 Lebanese protests. We also have with us Anis Germany, who is a political activist, both joining us for a breakdown of this crisis situation. Abbas Kode, let me first start with you. Welcome. One of the most cited reasons for Lebanon's economic collapse is the corruption factor. All eyes are on Riyad Salamid, Lebanon's central bank chief. Well, Madi, uh, you talked about corruption and mentioned Riyad Salamid. Well, Salame is just a part of the system. Uh, this sectarian political system doesn't allow you to build a real state. It's not a sudden collapse we're seeing now. This has been going since 1997, once we borrowed dollars from outside Lebanon. So it was a series of false decisions were made that led us to the collapse. Well, uh, Anis Germany, let me ask you then, should all eyes be on uh, Riyad Salame, Lebanon's central bank chief? 
Well, I wouldn't go as far as to describe uh, Riyad Salemi as a mastermind who outwitted his employees by creating some kind of empire right under their noses. Um, it really doesn't take much for a human being to engage in criminal activity when he was employed to do just that. Uh, if you look back at uh, Riyad Salemi's CV, it's quite short, actually. Before he was governor of Central Bank, um, he used to invest you know, money for the rich guys to, to you know, increase their wealth at Merrill Lynch. Um, he just happened to manage the wealth of Rafi Hariri, who was impressed by his skills, and then, you know, uh, he, he gave him the job. It was as simple as that. Usually governors of central banks have a background in law, you know, because their job is to uphold the law, to make sure everybody's working under the same rules. Time for our info news section where other economic news takes center stage. Now for our first economic news story, we're going to go to outer space. Well, this piece of news is actually a bit old, but it got lots of attention for the, all the wrong reasons. We know that the billionaire Jeff Bezos took flight into space. The whole world was mesmerized by this achievement, as they call it. But Oxfam took a different approach. It said that a handful of people accumulate enough wealth to flee the planet amid widespread suffering on an increasingly polluted, warming, and pandemic-ravaged Earth. It actually called it stratospheric inequality. On to Colombia, crisis there is somewhat continuing. The country recently marked its Independence Day, but protests against poverty, protests against inequality, they resumed on that day. Well, how bad is the economy in Colombia doing? We know that there are many negative indicators on Colombia for quite some time, and economic contraction is one of them. 7% economic contraction is what was recorded last, and because of that, uh, it has pushed an additional 3 million po people into poverty. On to Iran, a major achievement happened in Iran recently. Iran opened uh, an oil terminal to bypass strategic Strait of Hormuz. According to the Iranian president, outgoing president, I should say, Hassan Rouhani, he said the opening of this oil terminal in the Gulf of Oman showed the failure of U.S. sanctions, securing the continuation of Iran's oil exports. So kudos to Iran for another achievement there. And finally, Nord Stream 2, all the controversy surrounding that. Remember how the former U.S. President Donald Trump wanted that to be axed, including the current President Joe Biden. Well, it showed Russia has leverage on Europe because now it's part of history's dustbin. U.S. and Germany reached a deal on the Russian gas pipeline Nord Stream 2 would allow the completion of the pipeline to Europe without the imposition of further U.S. sanctions unless Russia uses it as a political weapon. Our in depth section will begin with a look at some of the economic indicators which point to what some have called a failed state. Now, this chart that you're going to see here in a second is what we're going to take a look at. It's uh, an overview of Lebanon's uh, stats overall. For example, uh, when we take a look at the population, it comes at 6 million for Lebanon, also close to 900,000 refugees that country is hosting. Then uh, poverty rate comes in at 55%, unemployment rate 45%, but that figure could be a lot higher with inflation coming in at 60%. Take a look at the country's GDP. It's very telling the way that this GDP has functioned over the years. The year 2010 it came in at uh, 8%, as you see here, but then it just kept going down. Uh, one drop after another, uh, which, uh, as you can see, 3.8%, uh, then negative 1.9%, all the way down to 20.3% for the year 2020. Now, uh, in terms of what the World Bank has said, it's a very startling statement. Uh, it says that such a brutal contraction that we just witnessed there um, is something that's usually associated with conflicts or wars which gives you an idea of the depth of the problem. But let's take a li listen to what uh, the poverty rate is in terms of the bigger picture in Lebanon.
Lebanon has experienced significant economic and political instability over the past few years. This has had major impact on poverty. A recent study that we did in ESQA estimates the poverty rate to be around 55% according to our uh, data in May 2020. In 2019, it was 28%. You can see the difference there. Okay, Lebanon's public debt, our next focus. Uh, taking a look at uh, the debt as percent of the GDP in billions of dollars. The year 2010, it stood at 137%, and you can see how quickly it's rising throughout the years, all the way through the year 2020, standing at 178% of the country's GDP. Now, Lebanon's balance of payments deficit needs to be looked at. It was $10.2 billion by the end of November 2020, and as recent as a couple of years ago, as you can see here, that has reached $5.8 billion. There was a slight decrease uh, from before, but obviously you can see how that has increased again throughout the years from 2010 through the year 2019. Now that brings us to Lebanon's currency. The Lebanese pound to the US dollar exchange rate, it's no surprise the crisis that this country is going through. Uh, you can see the official rate since 1997 has been $1 uh, to equal 1,507 Lebanese pounds. But take a look at where the jump occurred, which is uh, right around here where you can see the steep rise going all the way up to 20,000 Lebanese pounds. So the black market rate as of today, doesn't mean that tomorrow is going to be the same. It's probably going to increase. It stands at 20,000 Lebanese uh, pound. So this economic fallout obviously uh, is very telling and uh, severe impact on the uh, dollar compared to the Lebanese pound. So what does that mean? Uh, well, let's take a look at the purchasing power of the Lebanese. That has fallen dramatically. We're going to take a look at this infographic uh, to give you an idea about how badly it has affected the purchasing power and take a look at the milk. Now over here you can see the cash receipt for what in the year 2019 Lebanese pound could buy 10,250 Lebanese pound milk, tomatoes, oranges, apples, cucumbers, rice and chicken. Now the year 2020 that same amount of money can only buy you milk, tomatoes and oranges all one kilograms. So you can see four of those items have come out the uh, food table of each Lebanese. Now we come to the year 2021. Just one liter of milk is all you can buy for 10,000 Lebanese pounds as of compared to the tw year 2019 where you could buy all these items for that one, um, for that 10,000 Lebanese pounds. Lebanon just marked its one-year anniversary of its massive port blast. The country plunged into political and economic chaos. The economy tanked as a result, not that it was doing well. Most Lebanese goods flowed in and out of that port. Now the Lebanese were left with a broken economy and a broken country. Tensions were running high. Najib Mikati took over as the Prime Minister-designate after Saad al-Hariri's resignation. This was his latest stance. Frankly, with regard to the government, I was hoping the pace would be faster. It's going a bit slow. We wanted to form a government and announce it to the Lebanese people before August the 4th. August the 4th is a disaster that fell upon Lebanon and all the Lebanese people. And these are some of his previous statements when he served as a prime minister. Don't prejudge my behavior, please, and especially the international community. This cabinet will not take, it will not put Lebanon or take Lebanon into any radical decision. Lebanon always has a very good, very good relation with the international community. We would like to maintain stability in the country. We would like to, to, to create a prosperity in the economy. And that's, that's our objective today. The Lebanese, however, are pessimistic. The 
انسان ما بينوثق فيه واكبر غلطه بس هن المنظومه بدهم حدا مثلهم حرام الحرامي بده حرامي انا اكيد اكيد ضد لانه اوريدي جربناه وما رح نرجع نوقع بذات الغلطه مره ثانيه لانه اوريدي نحن واقعين بغلطه كبيره اللي هلا موجودين جربناه ورجعنا وقعنا وما رح نرجع نوقع اكيد مره ثانيه بدنا حدا جديد وحدا يعني من عمرنا وعنده كفاءه تاع يقدر يطلع البلد من الازمه الموضوع مش مرتبط بشخص الموضوع مرتبط بمسألة أكبر من شخص بالنهاية نجيب مئات نتيجة التسوية نتيجة تركيبة النظام بالبلد نتيجة التسويات اللي بتصير بالبلد There's a cocktail of crises that is plaguing Lebanon. Aside from the immediate economic factors, there are also competing interests in the country. Now, it is reported that Russia, for example, is looking to energy to gain a foothold in the country. Moscow's strategic interests intensified after the discovery of a large number of big subsea gas fields in what's called the Levant Basin. Russian company Novatech is part of a consortium which includes France's Total and Italy's Eni that has started oil and gas exploration on behalf of Beirut. Okay, in our final guest section, we will squeeze our last questions in. Uh, Abbas Kadeh, member of Citizens in a State Political Party, joins us and is Germany political activist. And Omar Nashabi, lecturer at Lebanese American University and founding member of Al Akbar newspaper, all join us now. Okay, uh, Omar, first to you. France, the former colonial power in Lebanon, has taken a lead role in trying to encourage Lebanon's politicians to agree on reforms, uh, particularly in the energy and banking sectors. Uh, to salvage the Lebanese economy. But the EU and U.S. are using sanctions against Lebanon, especially the U.S. who wants to deal with Hezbollah uh, through the lens of its so-called maximum pressure campaign. Uh, what do you think this is all about? Uh, I mean, is it all about cornering and alienating, for example, Hezbollah and Iran when it comes to uh, the U.S. and EU's, uh, and the EU in terms of focusing on that aspect in order to benefit Israel, for example? Yes, well, uh, you know, the, it is unfortunate uh, that uh, uh, the political parties in Lebanon rely on uh, foreign intervention and foreign initiatives for reform that is internal reform. That, that is uh, not feasible. Uh, I think any uh, foreign uh, uh, initiative for reform in Lebanon will be focused on uh, the interests of these foreign countries. The Lebanese people and the Lebanese political parties should come together and find an agreement uh, without any foreign intervention. All right, Anis, what do you think about this so-called French initiative to encourage Lebanon's politicians, as France has stated, to agree on reforms? This is while you're looking at the EU mulling new sanctions and the U.S. that has already imposed sanctions on Lebanon. Well, France's unilateral initiative to, um, you know, uh, try to salvage the situation in Lebanon after August 4th, uh, the explosion of August 4th last year, um, was quickly shrugged off by the sectarian leaders. I mean, they know very well that France lacks the military and financial capabilities to either make or break any kind of Lebanese system. So instead, they're all waiting for the, uh, you know, U.S. and Iran negotiations over the nuclear deal. And among the clauses will be, you know, a situation, something about Lebanon. This is what everybody's waiting for. Um, however, uh, France's stance today is different because uh, if you remember, uh, Macron visited Lebanon twice and, uh, you know, nobody, <laughs> nobody gave a damn about it. Um, the third time, however, he was lucky enough to escape uh, because he had COVID and it, it would have been a really a, pub a big public embarrassment for him because, you know, visiting the country three times and telling everybody do this, do that and nobody cares, uh, that would have been catastrophic for him. Um, however, uh, today France's stance is a bit different. They're more uh, setting themselves up as mediators between the US and European bloc and, uh, and Lebanon. Uh, I think, uh, you know, the U.S.'s maximum pressure campaign in, against Hezbollah ended with Trump's, uh, you know, with Trump's term. Uh, today, the Biden administration has adopted a different kind of strategy. They're focusing more on China and they're tying up all sorts of loose ends within the region, including Yemen, Afghanistan uh, and even Lebanon. I mean, they only have two goals and the two top priorities in Lebanon, uh, just to make sure that the country does not completely disintegrate 
in order to avoid any kind of other mass migration wave of Lebanese, Palestinians and Syrians towards Europe and to make sure that the southern border um, with Israel remains somewhat stable. All right. So uh, finally to you, um, Abbas Kodei, no matter how you look at uh, uh, the situation in Lebanon, it needs investments. Russia and China uh, is said to have shown interest. Uh, in particular, Russia was looking to uh, energy to gain a foothold in the country through the eastern Mediterranean, especially by reducing competition from rival pipelines like the proposed friendship pipeline that's between Iran, Syria and Iraq. Will Russia and maybe China look to invest in Lebanon and what do you think uh, uh, that will bring for Lebanon? Is, is it going to obtain its intended goals? Well, um, whoever invests in this land, if Russia or China, is not the core of the issue uh, in my mind. Uh, more important than that is whether we have leaders who regard the Lebanese as citizens and not as clients. Leaders who will save the society, leaders who consider the issues of the entire state and not the interest of the artificial component uh, concept. Um, not leaders who are hostages to foreign interests, if USA or um, or France or or even uh, East. Um, we need to be capable of developing a sovereign state that can take advantage of negotiating more powerfully with the outside forces instead instead of having the situation we are currently having now. Um, we are very weak. And we are trying to negotiate from a weak uh, point, and that's not good at all. Survive. But this, this uh, survival is going to take a great toll on us this time, oh. really, because it's the worst crisis we ever knew. So are we disconnected from people? Definitely not. I mean, just coming physically, being a part, you know, like half an hour, 45 minutes from uh, from Beirut or an hour, whatever the amount of time is, doesn't make you disconnected from people. Definitely not. Lebanon's story is a rather sad one. I mean, first you had the 15 years of civil war that practically ruined the country. And then while the country was trying to make up for all those lost years economically, it pursued wrong fiscal policies, especially when it came to things like debt that combined with massive corruption at the same time, the country is in the situation that it is now. All eyes are on Najib Mirati to save the country. He has had a go at this position before, but he gave up on it and resigned. Now to look at a Lebanese to work out Lebanon's problems, that's okay. But to look outside of Lebanon for Lebanon's dire monetary straits like France or financial institutions like the IMF, that could be dangerous because it will most certainly come with strings attached. That does it for this edition of Economic Divide. Your questions and comments are always welcome. From Ikovetari, it's goodbye until the next program.